Hello and welcome to a look at the information ratio with me, Andy Duncan, here at finlingo.com. Here we've got a benchmark portfolio in blue. Let's say it's the S&P 500, and these are the annual returns from the last 10 years. We'll take that last one as the current annual return. A portfolio manager is taking a look at this target portfolio, which I've put up in red. Let's imagine it's got the same total risk and systematic risk as the benchmark. Again, we'll mark that last return as the latest portfolio return. We can see the target portfolio is better than the benchmark in eight years out of 10. We've just got these two naughty years where the benchmark does beat the portfolio. But in all those other eight cases, the portfolio is beating the benchmark. So should that fund manager invest in this particular target portfolio? One ratio we'd probably like to use in this case is the information ratio but we need to get through some terminology first. The difference between the portfolio and the benchmark is called the active return. You might also know it as Jensen's alpha, but we'll get to that in another video. The standard deviation of all these active returns is called the tracking error. Once we've got a tracking error, we can now calculate the information ratio. So this is the portfolio return minus the benchmark return divided by that tracking error. And what it tells us is basically how much active return we can expect for a particular level of tracking risk against that target benchmark. The higher the result, the better in most cases. Let's move these figures then over to a cunning spreadsheet. Let's see if we can figure out the information ratio. Normally, you'll just get supplied with a tracking error, but for fun, we're going to work it out. The first thing we do is to take every benchmark return away from every portfolio return. This gets the active return for each pair. We then find out the average active return over all 10 pairs. Once we've got the average, we take this away from every single actual active return, then we square this result. Result. We then add up all the squares. We divide this sum by 10, the number of pairs, to get to a variance figure. Now we just square at this variance and now we have the standard deviation of the active returns or the tracking error. Now we can plug this into the information ratio. Using those final returns, we take the benchmark away from the portfolio, then divide by that tracking error. We now have an information ratio of 1.41. Let's try a question then on Finlingo. Here we've got a portfolio return of 6.37% and a benchmark return of 5.52%. Do be careful to avoid anything called the market return. That may be different from the actual benchmark, and the benchmark can be anything. It doesn't have to be the market. We've also got a supply tracking error of 4.42%. Let's move those figures then to another amazing spreadsheet. We take 5.52 away from 6.37, and this gives us 0.85. Then we divide this by 4.42 to get to an information ratio of 0.192. Click this over on Finlingo, and the job is complete. Head on over now to finlingo.com to get an infinite number of questions on how to calculate the information ratio. You'll find this and hundreds of other CFA-style questions, including questions on ethics and economics. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.